Hey friends, welcome back. Today we are going to discuss uh, several methods to determine activity and activity coefficient. There are various methods with the help of which we can determine activity and activity coefficient. Out of them, uh, some very renowned methods are solubility method, vapor pressure method, freezing point method, EMF method, isotonic method then uh, activity can be determined from gibbs duhem equation and it can also be determined from de theory and uh, uh, it can also be determined from randall and white method so these are few of the important methods with the help of which we can determine activity and activity coefficient today we are going to discuss one of the methods and that is solubility method now in this method, uh, we all know that when we are considering a saturated solution, then there, in a case of saturated solution, there exists an equilibrium between the solid solute and the dissolved solute that is present in the solution. That means okay, there is an equilibrium between the dissolved solute that we have taken and the undissolved solute. Okay, so for example, we are uh, dissolving NaCl in water. So when we prepare NaCl or when we prepare a saturated solution of NaCl, then there will be an equilibrium between the dissolved NaCl and undissolved NaCl. And generally, solubility method is used for determining the activities and activity coefficient of sparingly soluble salt because in sparingly soluble salt the equilibrium or sparingly soluble salt has very low solubility they dissolve up to very low extent and hence there always exist an equilibrium between the dissolved and undissolved solute and under such circumstances the chemical potential of the dissolved and the undissolved solutes are also equal and at a given temperature so uh, suppose if we consider any electrolyte say ab and this electrolyte if it dissociates in v plus amount of cations and v minus amount of anions then their equilibrium reaction can be written as ab will dissociate to form v minus amount of a raised to v plus plus v plus amount of b raised to v minus and this can be simply understood by taking the example of nacl so nacl valency of na is plus 1 cl is plus 1 so we will have na plus plus cl minus so we have 1 na plus and 1 cl minus or uh, one more example can be taken like uh, the dissociation of AlCl3. So, in case of AlCl3, we will have Al plus 3 plus 3 Cl minus. So, in this way, <coughs> this valency or this positive valency comes over here and negative valency comes over here. So, similarly, plus 3 will come over here, minus 1 will come over here. That is understood. So, in this way, dissociation can be written and over here the chemical potential of undissociated molecule is always equal to the chemical potential of some of the respective ions so the chemical potential of undissociated ion is always equal to the sum of the chemical potential of the dissociated ions so hence we can write the chemical potential that is mu it is equal to v plus into chemical potential of v raised to v minus plus v minus into mu a raised to v plus so it is v plus mu b raised to v minus plus v minus mu of a raised to v plus so chemical potential of B minus uh, B ion and chemical potential of A 
cation can be taken and we also know that chemical potential is related to activity by the relation that is mu is equal to mu 0 plus rt log a so with the help of this relation chemical potential is related to activity and hence we will use the same to convert this or we will replace chemical potential by the activity terms and hence for say uh, mu of dv minus we can write it as mu zero of dv minus plus rt log of a dv minus and similarly mu of av plus can be written as mu zero of av plus plus rt log of activity of av plus okay and as we know that mu zero are constants over here so we can substitute both these values in this equation and we can directly multiply this v plus with both these terms and v minus for both these terms and hence we can write mu will be equal to v plus mu zero of dv minus plus v plus into rt log of activity of dv minus plus v minus mu zero of activity of d plus plus v minus rt log activity of a v plus now we will rearrange this equation in the form that we will take constant terms on one side and variable terms will remain on other side so in this equation chemical potential is constant this is constant and this term so these three terms are constant so these three terms will be taken on one side and other terms will remain on other side so we can we will have v plus log a b v minus plus v minus log a a v plus is equal to mu minus this will go that side so it will be minus v plus mu b0 of v minus this term also will go that side so it will be minus v minus mu0 of a v minus upon and both these terms have rt common so rt will come in division so we will have rt now all these terms which i have written on the right hand side are constants where chemical potential is constant mu zero is the standard chemical potential that is constant mu zero is constant r is real gas constant and we are measuring or we are performing at constant temperature so t is also constant so all these constants can be combined and can be written as a single constant k okay so our equation will become and further we know that log the if any term is on this side log it will go to the power so we can write log of a b v minus raised to v plus plus log of a a v plus raised to v minus that is equal to constant k and again we know that log of addition is a multiplication function so we can combine both these terms and we can write a b v raised to minus v plus into a a v plus raised to v minus and that is equal to k now in order to remove the logarithm we will take the anti-logarithm on both hand side and again as this is constant so the anti logarithm can be written as ks which is an another constant 
term so our equation will take form a b raised to v minus raised to v plus into a a raised to v plus raised to v minus okay where ks is another constant that we have taken now we all know that activity is related to several concentration terms by activity coefficient and activity can be written as gamma c that we have already seen in our previous lecture so hence activity can be replaced by respective activity coefficient and concentration so our equation will become gamma plus c plus raised to v plus into gamma minus c minus raised to v minus and that we can write it equal to k now suppose if we consider that s is the solubility in moles per liter it is the solubility in moles per liter then concentration of positive ions will be equal to the valency into the solubility and similarly concentration of negative ions will be equal to v minus s so concentration of positive and negative ions can be found out and we can substitute both these terms in the above equation and hence uh, we will have gamma plus v plus s raised to v plus into gamma minus v minus s raised to v minus is equal to k s now we will separate the individual terms and hence we can write gamma plus raised to v plus v plus raised to v plus s raised to v plus gamma minus raised to v minus v minus raised to v minus and s raised to v minus is equal to k s now we all know that if the sum of the anions and cations is equal to the total amount can be written as v or total valency v can be written and the activity coefficient that is gamma plus into gamma minus can be written as gamma plus minus that is mean activity so gamma plus gamma minus can be written as gamma plus minus and v plus plus v powers are added up so v plus plus v minus can be written as v so we can write gamma plus minus raised to v into s again plus minus can be written as v into v plus v raised to v plus v minus raised to v minus and that is equal to case again we can rearrange this equation and hence we have s raised to v or we have s into gamma plus minus is equal to ks divided by v plus raised to v plus v minus raised to v minus both these terms can be taken into division and over here we have to the power v so on this side it will be 1 by v so this term again ks is constant v plus v minus are constant and hence this can be again written as another constant that is k dash or k double dash or we can write k and if we are taking two solutions which contains added salts then we can designate it as designated them as salt one or solution one and solution two and hence our equation will become s1 gamma plus minus one will be equal to s2 gamma plus minus 2 and that will be equal to k dash now from this particular equation if we can find the value of k dash then mean activity coefficient or activity for a sparingly soluble salt can be calculated now this can be done by taking or this can be done by making solubility measurement in presence of added salts at various ionic strength so by measuring the solubility at various ionic strengths and ionic strength is given by mu 
इज इक्वल टू हाफ समेशन सी आई जेड आई स्क्वेर सो हाफ समेशन सी आई जेड आई स्क्वेर दिस गिवस अवर आयोनिक स्ट्रेंथ सो सॉलिबिलिटी एट सेवरल आयोनिक स्ट्रेंथ कैन बी कैलकुलेटेड एंड देन वी कैन प्लॉट अ ग्राफ ऑफ आयोनिक स्ट्रेंथ वर्सेस द सॉलिबिलिटी एंड वील गेट अ स्ट्रेट लाइन एंड दैट स्ट्रेट लाइन कैन बी एक्स्ट्रापोलेटेड अप टू इनफाइनाइट डायल्यूशन सो वी कैन एक्स्ट्रापोलेट दिस स्ट्रेट लाइन अप टू इनफाइनाइट डायल्यूशन एंड दिस स्ट्रेट लाइन विल मीट अ पॉइंट ऑन द सॉलिबिलिटी एक्सिस एंड एज वी नो दैट एट डायल्यूट सोल्यूशन और इन इनफाइनाइट डायल्यूट सोल्यूशन द एक्टिविटी कोफिशियंट इज ऑलवेज यूनिटी सो एक्टिविटी कोफिशियंट इज यूनिटी एंड द वैल्यू ऑफ सोल्यूबिलिटी विच विल गेट विल बी इक्वल टू के डेस सो वी विल फाइंड और वी गॉट द वैल्यू ऑफ के डेस एंड वी नो द सोल्यूबिलिटी सो वी कैन इजिली फाइंड आउट द एक्टिविटी कोफिशियंट सो इफ कॉन्स्टेंट कैन बी फाउंड आउट देन एक्टिविटी कोफिशियंट and from activity coefficient activity can also be calculated so once again we can find the solubility at different ionic strengths and at different ionic strength we can find solubility and that can be plotted against each other and we will get a straight line that straight line is extrapolated at infinite dilution and at infinite dilution it will intersect the solubility axis at a point and as you know that at infinite dilution the activity coefficient is always unity and hence the value which we will get will be the value of the constant so if constant is known solubility is already known and hence activity coefficient can be calculated very easily hope the topic is clear